What's up everyone, Train Freak here, and today we got layout update. So last week we were on staging, or we got started with staging, and we did a little bit of grid work. So this week we got something totally different. Um, did a little bit more bench work, not a whole lot, mainly just cutting a couple of pieces of plywood, but we worked on something else. So before we get to it, um, Tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern. It would be on Rainbow Bells, but he actually passed it off to Rick Bailey. Yes, our residential pine tree is hosting Sidetrack Sunday tonight. What all he's got planned, I have no clue. So, 8 o'clock Eastern. Make sure you check out Rick's channel uh, card up in the corner. And so that way you can enjoy some good old Sidetrack Sunday fun. All right? Um, other than that, the 700 subscriber prize that we held Bingo on last week on Sidetrack Sunday, when I hosted, he has claimed this prize, so that contest is officially closed. Next contest will be at the 800 subscriber mark. The HO and O scale prizes will pass or fast forward on. And then um, I've got N scale prizes coming. And then we will be doing another secondary prize. That is correct. And so, uh, probably going to do another Tsunami sound car. Um, I think that's a, a pretty good one to do, which it's more than just the decoder. I'm actually sending you the magnetic wand uh, that goes with it and a speaker with speaker baffle. The only thing that you would have to supply on your own end would be the elect you know how your trucks pick up the electrical power or if you wanted it battery operated either or but with it being a decoder you might just want to go with the electrical pickup so you can control it so other than that let let me show you what i worked on with the help of a local friend and we'll go from there so stay tuned wait a second it's dark in here. Hold up just a minute. Ah, there we go. So yes. What I've done is I added a sheet of plywood there. And another sheet back there. I haven't got them screwed in yet. But that's not the main thing I worked on. Let's zoom up a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. So yes, we installed some track lighting. Now, I know some of you are going to mention, hey, you didn't get all the way up in the corner. Actually, the ceiling is bowed bad. And when I got a screw in there, it actually caused the 1x4 to split. So, but when I put fascia on it, it'll be nothing. But yes, I installed some track lighting to go. And I haven't gone any further yet because I didn't feel like there was a need to. But the way I had to do it, because they do not make 45 degree angles, I had a 90 out that way, go across, and then put in a T and come back to put that light there in the middle. Uh, if I need more than one light there, then I will have to probably put up another 1x4 and some more T's, you know, and cut those things to fit. Uh, but the way I did my L girders is I took a 1x4 flat. And I put a 1 by 2 the opposite direction on the front like that. And um, I tried to screw these into the studs as best as possible. But some places I could not get to the studs. So what I ended up doing was I got some of these really cool anchors. Um, and they're rated for 75 pounds. But they look like these. And you tap them in. Let's look at this one here. So you tap it in the drywall, and then you actually screw it in, and then the screw screws into the anchor. And I jerked and yanked on that sucker, and it's not coming off. So, um, but as far as screwing the 1x2 to the 1x4, I just use regular deck screws, 1 and 5 8 inch um, from the top side, and what not and I had the help of my friend John Goforth uh, to help me hold things up there while I'm screwing stuff in because that's not easy but yeah we just kind of stopped 
over for that spot for the time being. I will pick up on that later. Um, but right now, you know, I've told y'all work from the top down. And so this is the top. The only thing that I would have to add on to this is fascia to the front. Um, maybe 12 inches worth of fascia, uh, 15 at the most. And that way it kind of hides the lights and it will keep all the lighting contained. The other thing I need to do is I've got these blue Christmas lights. And I left myself plenty of room between the uh, track lighting and the 1x2 that comes down. Is I'm going to hang blue Christmas lights up there uh, for nighttime operations. It's supposed to simulate like a full moon. So I still got to do that which I will be able to take the track of the 45 degree. But yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, this has been a huge undertaking because uh, I didn't have any 1x2s in stock, so I had to rip some 1x4s into 1x2s. So, and as far as my joints here, I did it that way. That is a 22 and a half degree cut. I did it there. And I also did it right there. I'm gonna try not to get the light in, but right here on the bottom side, right there. That is a 45 degree cut and that was added after. And that was because I literally had no choice but to go that way with the, um, the track lighting, but that's okay. Um, I'm thinking this is gonna be good as far as the lights I'm using. Um, they, the bulbs type is called a BR30. They're 65 watt, rated at daylight or 5,000 Kelvin. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it. So other than that, that's pretty much all I got. Um, I will hook those lights into my dimmer switch, um, at a later time. And I got to figure out where I'm going to put the dimmer switch first. Uh, so that way we can, the uh, dispatcher can control the lighting and change it from day to nighttime operations as needed. So, all right. Well, other than that, I'm going to let y'all have at it. Uh, Sidetrack Sunday, 8 o'clock tonight, Rick Bailey. Make sure you go check him out. And then, other than that, y'all have a great week. Be safe out there and happy railroading.